The Amen. Italian boy mafia of the day. <laughs> uh, There's a bunch of us. Yeah, it's a bunch of you, four at least. So tell us about uh, speech recognition, the Hirschian, whoever you see, all the things. So, uh, when I started preparing my talk for FOSDEM, I was thinking about building something that was not usual. Like, we usually work using various APIs, most of them are commercial, stuff like IBM Watson and Google Voice and things like that. And I decided, what if I start my talk by building an application that's based only on open source technology, including the more advanced stuff, such as machine learning and stuff like that. So, who am I first? Uh, my name is Luca Pradovera, I'm the new lead at Mojolingo, which is a company that's been managing the addition project and the other stuff and I'm a Edition contributor and I will tell you all about Edition today and I've been playing with phones since I was eight. My father is also a telephony engineer and it runs in the family. So, demo first. I, someone, could someone call James Bodie while I pull up the demo please? So, uh, a warning, the demo doesn't actually work <laughs> because we have no audio. <laughs> So what I've been trying to do here is get a call into a WebRTC client, uh, which was the part that didn't work essentially, which I, I touched on my presentation, I did a slide on this after, and uh, get the call through speech recognition using Pocket Sphinx, so it's free and open source uh, software, run it through a free uh, platform that's called uh, NLU that does the uh, actual bot interpretation, kind of like wheats.ai, other stuff, and then spit out the result. What I did here, I need a Chinese restaurant. I'm just piping the Bensi browser and essentially what we're doing is that we get a Chinese restaurant out of that. Uh, this is looks simple. It is essentially simple. It's also very not polished, so it's horribly complicated. So what just happened? This was WebRTC going to FreeSwitch. Uh, check the disclaimer, so demo might not actually contain Robert to see. Uh, Frizwitch is sending a call to Adirshan for control. Adirshan is uh, using the result from CMU Sphinx to go through Reza and LU and ask Google for a restaurant. F-Lite is what is speaking the voice. F-Lite is an open source uh, TTS engine that's not too bad. Actually, that's one of the things I found out by building this application is that all of these products are surprisingly good and we're skipping over and giving money and time to big corporations and we should probably be working with some of these people on projects. That's impor the important message you got from building this one. Well, and it, we're using HTTP just to go through. And this camera says no keyboards have been harmed during the preparation of this demo. That's not actually true. I broke one just because I was so angry. Um, so moving part. As I said, this, we have FreeSwitch uh, with Modverto. Adirshan, which is the main uh, control layer. Pocket Sphinx and f -Lite are the voice and Razor and LU. So, what you, everybody knows what FreeSwitch is by now. There's been like about three presentations and Giovanni is better than me in explaining what FreeSwitch is. So, uh, it's a switching platform. You can use it for a variety of things. It's, good. it's got very good modularity. It's easy to turn off features you don't want. And uh, it's got very good WebRTC support uh, through Modverto. I'm talking about FreeSwitch just because I use FreeSwitch to build this particular demo. Asterisk will be ASCO, they don't have Modverto, they just use SIP over at WebRTC. And it's pretty much, uh, they're, right now they're feature equal, depending exactly what you need, there might be some differences, but I don't see anything that's really relevant in that. Uh, the ERM boys, as I said, are Pocket Sphinx. Uh, could, Pocket Sphinx will be tuned for better results for starters. This guy really only understands a few hundred words. Just because I'm running with a stock grammar, there's a larger grammar, I didn't have time to install that. It sounds like it's worked pretty well. And f uh, gives you good TTS for the price, which is free. The voice is a bit robotic, but then again, it does speak pretty well. The interesting thing I discovered when working on this project was this library I didn't know about, which is Reza NLU. This is a, um, a machine learning and network language processing uh, library that aims at uh, providing a service similar to with.ai, Lewis uh, API.ai, so essentially a conversational interpretation of uh, text. 
you ask it a question, and you, on the back end you have built a tree of entities and phrases it understands, and it will give you back an intent and subjects. What's an intent? Intent is what the person wanted to do or know, and what the subject is, is what the person wanted to do or know about. So I need the Chinese restaurant as an intent of restaurant search, in my configured example, and an object of Chinese, because I said I want a Chinese restaurant. So that's then used to do a search. This is a very, very interesting project, also because it's almost batteries included. It really didn't take long to set up. And the, the time that you're taking in setting up your model uh, can be reused on any other platform just because they're compatible. So what did I learn building the app? Principally one thing, we need a better way to set up free switch or rasters for WebRTC development locally. Working with uh, various security requirements, especially the SSL certificates, is a pain that needs to be fixed, and I'm probably going to start and figure out how to fix it from Monday on. Uh, Pocket Sphinx is not as bad as the reputation it has. Pocket Sphinx is considered a toy. That is a wrong, essentially wrong. It does most of what you need in a simple application, including interpreting simple grammars, so you can ask it yes, no questions. You're generally asking that kind of question in a voice application anyway. You don't want people to tell you the story of their lives and then interpret that. You don't really care. If they need a counselor, they call a person, not a bot. Uh, there's value in running your own brain. Like, of course, there's an um, economical value. You're not spending money at all. And essentially, the setup time is so tiny, it's probably worth to still look into using something that you host personally, and you're contributing back to um, open source, and you're not giving things back to Facebook or Google or whatever. They have enough money, they don't need ours. The other important part, the very important part, is addition itself. So all these services are disconnected, in a sense, from each other. FreeSwitch records the audio, Pocket Sphinx interprets it, um, uh, NLU uh, gives you the conversational representation of what the person said, but you need something to run the call, pick up, answer, do the recordings, um, shuttle around messages between the various parts. And that's where addition comes into place. So first of all, has anybody here heard about addition before? Woo! That's like 300% the usual amount, which is one. Um, that's bad. Here's addition, it's great. It's a Ruby voice application framework, uh, which provides three third-party call control logic uh, to telephony engines, which means we don't mess with the actual media flow. We just uh, handle things like picking up the call, uh, transferring, answering, uh, recording, playing audio, collecting input, using ASR, etc. Uh, it connects to the two main open source platforms, which are FreeSwitch and Asterisk, using two different mechanisms. One is RIO for uh, FreeSwitch, and one is AMI for Asterisk. We're not on ARI, I know we should. Uh, version 2 is stable, and it's been stable for a while, so we just released um, an update. And version 3 has been at RC1 for quite a while, because there's one bug we need to fix, and we, we, need, we need a sponsor for that, essentially, but it'll come, uh, come up soon enough. And it's backed by a foundation, so the project has guaranteed long-term viability. And so we have a few new things in addition three, which make it even easier to build, to use as a glue for building your own complicated applications, whether they're voice-based or uh, other types. Uh, for which support is radio only. That's mm, it doesn't use the event socket anymore. In case anybody knows what an event socket is, Aster 11 plus is required, which is well. Mm, I mean, right now it's okay. I think uh, we streamlines the internals a lot. It's got like 30. Per, it's 30 percent faster on benchmarks, and it's got a built-in HTTP server. So if you need to build a very simple dashboard to your example. Uh, PBX, uh, telephony, internal telephony exchange for your office. You can have it straight on the server without any other service. And it's got native internalization support, uh, which means you can uh, easily play uh, and send uh, translated text. It's important just because we didn't have it. I know, I know it's forgiven these days, but it wasn't there before. Uh, what can you do? So there's plugins. Plugins give you voicemail. Uh, Pseudo TTS, what's Pseudo TTS? It's a plugin I built that uh, will play dates, numbers, and um, generally ordinal numbers, so first, second, third, uh, just starting from a string uh, with uh, audio files it carries itself. So you can even run without any kind of TTS and it will still try and play audio for people. Uh, there's platform-specific functionality plugins, mostly for asterisk. Asterisk has very good um, 
let's primitive support, uh, native support, while free switch is only supported through Rio. Uh, we have clustering, login has been unified, so it's easier to deploy to Heroku and whatnot. They're all small changes by far and wide, but in general speaking, means that you can just take an additional application, deploy it to uh, Heroku, point, point it at your free switch server, and you're done. Uh, so every phone call is an actor. Uh, probably someone has heard about the actor model, some people haven't. Uh, has anybody here used Erlang or Elixir? Same people from before. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so anyways, this, uh, the idea is that every call is isolated. If a call crashes, the process doesn't go down. Uh, so we're falling back into what uh, Giovanni mentioned earlier. So if, uh, if a call goes down, it's not a big deal as long as your system doesn't go down. So the goal is to have something that always runs. Uh, messages are passed around with, uh, as events, and each call runs the handling logic in the uh, actor thread, which is a technical term to say if the call dies, only the call dies, the rest stays up. Uh, so as I said, controllers group up features. So it's kind of like Rails or any MVC application, really. There's a controller for every thing you want people to do. So the demo I run is one controller that asks the person for the restaurant, checks for the if there's a valid input and then looks for a restaurant and sends the URL back to the browser. Uh, routing, kind of like a web app, controls which call, call goes to which route, uh, controller using, uh, I don't know, could be a phone number, could be time of the day, so the usual time of the day thing where your office are open or closed, but it's far more flexible than using the dial plan because you can, this is a normal Ruby application, you can access anything you want inside an application. There's an event handler to handle async messages, and it's generally based on celluloid, which makes it behave similar to what an, um, an Erlang application is. And there are DSLs for all common operations, so you can really replace your dial plan. Quick thing on the Rio protocol. The Rio protocol is an XMPP extension uh, that we use to communicate with FreeSwitch. It's interesting because it's called built-in load balancing, so it scales easy, it scales very well. Actually, addition scales better on FreeSwitch than uh, asterisk thanks to Rio. Uh, as a side effect, every addition node is all, has also its own XMPP address you can use to control the, uh, the instance or send out events or participate in chats. Uh, so that's not really restricted to FreeSwitch. It will just connect to FreeSwitch using Rio, but it will also have, okay. Oh, I have eight, perfect. So, uh, addition on asterisk has no Rio support. There's no Rio on asterisk, doesn't really matter. Uh, connects via AMI, we're not using ARI yet. Again, sorry, we'll get there. Uh, there's much better native command support. So if you have a platform that's based on a very complicated asterisk install with a giant dial plan with thousands of lines and context skips and whatnot, you're better served moving it to addition right now because it will be at least one-tenth of the lines of code in Ruby. It's slightly easy to get started because of configuration and a couple of reasons. So so if you checking out the edition, try Astros first. What can you do? As I said, calls, conferences, uh, media, uh, drive various types of uh, speech recognition commercial engines that use special grammars that are XML formats. Uh, build very complex IVRs from simply press one if you need to do this or press two to do that. We have IVRs recording anything from um, flight reservations to people placing complaints because they didn't receive their newspaper today to really anything else. And you can connect to a database. Deployment is, I'll, I'll speed up a little just to get to a few other interesting slides. It's deployed on any, really, any Ruby flavor. It's usually one-on-one -on -one with FreeSwitch and Asterisk. So on FreeSwitch now you can scale, so you can, you, it's sort of decoupled. You can have multiple nodes with multiple FreeSwitch nodes. Uh, it's easier to scale provided you have a load balancer, so it makes it everything easier to scale. Quickly, this is an XML dial plan for FreeSwitch, and this, it's like a board with a nail through it. It's good, but it will only the work for some things, and it's difficult to adapt. Uh, the controller code is not, well, well, you can read it, of course, but you can't hit the slides. Uh, it's, uh, controller code is not necessarily shorter, so it doesn't look like it's any simpler, but keep in mind that it's normal Ruby code. You can literally access anything a Ruby application can. So uh, anything from a common line application to APIs to whatever you need, uh, we use this to push events to the browser, as you saw, was con just connecting to a web socket and pushing events to the browser right away without any intermediate process. Um, who's using addition? Just to give you a few examples, these guys have an interesting uh, application based on an asterisk, if I'm not wrong, that uh, does, so you're, you need a doctor, you don't know who to call, you're new in the area, 
they give you a number, you call that number, they put you through Dr. Tosari, either on call or available depending on a complex routing table. For example, that's the kind of application that will be a pain to build in just in a dial plan or just using more uh, HTTP curl complicated stuff like that, just because you will have to adapt your logic to how Asterisk and Frizzwitch want you to build it. Well, here what you do is just keep your logic in addition. All you do is a, simply ask, a simple SQL query, manipulate whatever you need to do, generate specific uh, messages for the different doctors, and just handle uh, the call in an easier and more integrated way. Again, we're not doing anything with the media flows or signaling or whatnot. This is just call control. Uh, Live Connect. This is the newest project we have. This is WebRTC based. This is, uses uh, FreeSwitch to broadcast operating room surgery. Why is this SIP based? Because we got a very strange piece of hardware that's FDA approved in the US and we could only use that and that's a very weird thing because it connects through SIP to send out video. That's I don't know who came up with that, but we had to use that just because changing that would have meant, you know, the millions of dollars invested and whatnot. And so what we do is uh, that client calls the FreeSwitch server and we just replicate the call over to a WebRTC. People, they call him. In this case, what uh, the challenge was is uh, managing security. You have to be very sure that you, as a student, you're only allowed to join a certain surgery during a certain time and not other times, just to, you know, you, you, those are all sensible data and stuff. So, uh, it, again, in this case, Addition allows you to very easily manage access to the conferences by going through the database. We actually check with, I think it's a, I don't remember which big CRM application is handling the um, actual access, but the, the, the university that's running this has their own platform, and as part of checking if the user is allowed to, check, to get into a conference, we check with that API. Uh, Power Home Remodeling. This is just a big customer of all things. They're, well, they're a, a customer of us that are also big users of addition. They have a very big, they sell half a billion dollars of windows every year which is a huge amount of windows. Not windows, computer windows, like literally glass windows. And they were built out of a, um, essentially out of call center. So the call center has always been very central to their strategy. And uh, I'm talking about them more about the scaling properties that addition has than the actual functionality. In this particular case, addition is not doing much more than just a dialer. So what it does is they have a list of people, they call those people and connect them to agents to have them confirm appointments or take appointments. It's very simple from an operating standpoint. But uh, they have 400 call center operators working 24 seven and they have uh, only one asterisk box and one addition node with another called spare standing by. So yeah, that's not ideal, but they're what they're doing. So the we can run a lot of calls. It doesn't add any noticeable overhead. You're going to hit your asterisk or frizzwitch single box number of maximum number of calls before you hit the Ruby maximum number of calls in this case. Well, there's a few other, uh, as I said, the publishing system. They do uh, complaints and stuff. Uh, we have one MVNO. Oh, I have guessed which one, but no one knows which one. It's Ring Plus in the U.S. just because there's nobody here from the U.S. side of things, I think. And uh, there's an, an interesting free project we have. It's a cultural mediator network. So people that speak a language and have done a course by the, the Italian government say, I'm available, I speak Hindi, and I'm available to help out people who are in distress and only speak that language. And there's a, a writing system that the police can call a number and they will give it will give them a person speaking that language so they can put them in touch with, say, someone who's with the police or in a hospital and not speaking a language. Uh, we have cases, though, in which the uh, nurse or policeman didn't know which, which language the person was speaking. So <laughs> there, in which case we route them to uh, some people who, are, who speak a lot of languages and will try to understand what language that is. So, uh, thank you, I, I had to speed through a little. There's plenty of other things I could show you, but the main thing is addition removes a lot of the complexity of building applications like the one I sort of demoed earlier. Unfortunately, we can fix the WebRTC certificate, but that's something I'll fix later. And if there's any questions, I'll be glad to, ask, uh, to answer. I should be about three minutes. Yes. Great. Hope you liked it. <laughs> All right.